Hello my friends, my name is Dumitri and this is my friend Petro. Today we will show you the Tundra. The Tundra has long winters and short summers. Also, the Arctic Tundra is known to only be between 10 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Usually negative degrees in Celsius. Onward, Kovarsh. Onward! Welcome to the Arctic Tundra, but in my country, we call it the Ice Desert. Beautiful business. <laughs> Nailed it. The Tundra has a vast, flat, permanently frozen subsoil. It is in North America, near the poles, away from the equator. It is known for its harsh, cold climates. It is primarily in Russia, Siberia, Antarctica, Northern Asia, Northern America, such as Greenland and uh, Alaska. It is intense, it is hard to leave you. Most humans cannot survive, let alone thrive. <laughs> Another inhabitant of the Arctic tundra is the caribou, a reindeer of sorts. It has a large, stocky body that contains a lot of meat. It retains all of its heat. It has a double-layered coat, so it is very warm in the Arctic winters. It is able to sustain the coldest weather. Most of them migrate throughout the throughout their region. They eat mostly uh, herbivores in a way. So I mean, they they eat producers. They are herbivores. Hey little mama, let me whisper in your ear on what you call a reindeer. <laughs> this is the East Siberian brown bear. This creature is specially adapted to the environment. With all of its fur, it allows it to stay warm. It is very prone to, prone to find this in the mountainous regions of Siberia. This creature of small mammals and fish. Very scary. Is it not? There we go. Chernobyl was bad, my comrades. Here in the Arctic tundra, there are many animals scourging around for food for the few crops that there are. Over here we see the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox, a Siberian native, is seen here dead from dehydration and malnutrition. Most Arctic foxes can condense their body heat to, uh, so they can last up to negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit in the Arctic tundra. The Arctic tundra, also known as the ice desert, is a vast wasteland with uh, subsoil that is usually permanently frozen. Uh, on top of this, most Arctic foxes, such as this beauty, do not, dis do not disperse or migrate. They only migrate or move to follow food. The food that they usually eat are seabirds, small mammals such as hares or arctic bunnies, and uh, such small plants such as voles and legumes. Uh, their habitats are usually just snowy conditions, some boulders, and places that they can sleep. Not much else. They, they truly have minimal things to live with. Uh, overall, its survival is grim. I do not expect them to live much longer. They're quite endangered. Uh, other than the fact that they're being hunted by red-tailed foxes, his natural enemy, uh, they are also dying of just food loss and overall <laughs> uh, lack of nutrition. And that is all we can say right now for our Arctic fox friend. <laughs> the Arctic fox is not at a critical level of endangerment yet. There's still a few thousand left. Despite this, I believe that we should impose laws that favor hunting the red fox, mm -hmm. its natural enemy. In this no matter what, this fox will most likely go extinct in a few years due to climate change. The, uh, a very short amount of food that it has. Uh, the, the ice seems to be melting in Siberia, which is bad for our crops. Our homeland is melting. Hello again, comrades! It is Pietro's brother, Gorbachev. Today, we found other arctic fox. It's over there. They're almost extinct. According to the Endangered Species Act of 1973, there are only about 2,000 left, and we cannot kill any more. Otherwise, they will surely go extinct. We must protect them. It is a law in all of the world. 
Yes. And now, here, I still have to strangle. Now, we need to know something about Russian culture. In Russia, you cannot kill endangered species, such as the Arctic fox. The Siberian brown bear, on the other hand, I'm allowed to take down. Poachers are allowed to do it. The Russian law does not use criminal justice system against me here. I'm allowed to in my own defense. For the Arctic fox, however, I am no longer legally allowed to. Under the law in 1993. Welcome to Siberia, my friends. What's that brought you? It's a luck, personalist is none. I didn't mean to kill the fox. Here we see it. A Russian poacher. He just killed an Arctic fox. He's pleading for his life with Vladimir Putin, our greatest president, from the KGB. Of course, the fox is endangered. The Endangered Species Act from 1973 protects their lives. This man shall be tried under criminal law for both Russian rules and the rules from the Species Act. He will, most likely, he will most likely spend the rest of his life in prison. He's money! Dimitri, you have shamed your family. He's money! You are no longer my brother. He's money! <laughs> well, here we see the bearberries, a very common plant in the Arctic tundra, often eaten by small mammals such as the Arctic fox itself, and many others. Uh, of course, they have some seeds inside them, uh, small fruit with seeds inside them, that are nu nutrients for many animals. Uh, the deep roots that they have allow them to survive the Arctic winter. Of course, the, the small silky fibers that they possess allow them to, uh, I suppose, survive and outlast other species. Over there, it's a basket flower. Uh, the basket flower has a developed root system. It keeps out the cold climate. It is covered in fine, insulated, silky hands. Small white flowers. Very beautiful. A Siberian native. An inhabitant. A must-see in Siberia. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh my god. We have traveled many miles through the Arctic tundra to find this one incredible plant. The Tuxted Sassafrage. You see it back there. Far right corner. Dark green. It's similar to the spinach plant in America. Not the exact same, it has rigid, long leaves. The straight flower stems, it has a small fruit in each little piece. Uh, it, within each small fruit are seeds so it can keep growing. The main reason it lasts so long is because it has a deep underground root system, uh, allowing it to survive in the harsh winter. This is a very bountiful place. As you can see, they have plenty of other indigenous plant species sitting here. Siberia nice. is very diverse. Very diverse. Hello, comrades! Today we are interviewing some American tourists about facts about our great homeland, Russia. Remember, peace, land, and bread. Sir, sir, Mr. Tories, I have a question of it for you. Do you know the yearly precipitation rate in Russia? Fifteen to twenty-five centimeters. Well, again, comrades, we have another issue of interviews with tourists. This time with a Korean correspondent. Sir, sir, may we bother you for the moment? I have a very important question. What do you believe the quality is of the Arctic tundra soil? I believe very poor. Incredibly, it is incredibly poor. Some of the There's worst in the world. The water quality in Russia is very bad. This is one of the few fresh water plants we have. Found. As you can see, this is a stray Russian dog, thirsty and deprived of water. Hello again, comrade. It is me, Petrov. We shall interview another person. Come with me. Sir, sir, stop abusing your hoe. What are some of the problems facing the Arctic tundra in Siberia? Other than, of course, air pollution caused by industrial radiation and climate change from the sun and melting ice caps. 
ecological imbalances. Exactly correct. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, my friends. It is me again, Dimitri. And this is my friend Petro. Hello, comrades. Over my shoulder, over there, is our melting ice caps. Siberia, one of our greatest threats, our the greatest problems here in the Arctic tundra, is climate change. The ice caps are melting. Every part of our ice, the permafrost that makes up our soil, is disintegrating, is evaporating into thin air. Sooner or later, we will be nothing, reduced to rubble. Peace, London, but it also makes better. Hello again, comrades! Today, we will be discussing some of the greatest benefits of Mother Russia, of the Arctic tundra on which we live. Uh, what, what, probably, probably the best, the one greatest thing, is the oil it provides. As seen here, a Russian farmer is tilling, no, no, not tilling, drilling for oil. He's drilling his heart out. He will do whatever it takes to get this oil. Of, of course, in the background, my great friend, my greatest comrade, Dmitry, is showing you the proper slob squat. Beautiful. Hello again, comrades. It is me, Brother Petrov. Here today, we are going to ask some people about the environmental benefits of our Arctic tundra, our homeland, Siberia, for humans. So happy, sir. Oh, he's what very much! He does not! No, Hello again, comrades! It is me, Brother Petrov! Here today, with another Siberian native! Our greatest friend, our greatest amigo of all time! Sir, I have a great question for you. Did you know Siberia, Russia, our homeland? Peace, land and bread for all. The Bolshevik Revolution was amazing. Um, I must ask, do you know what the Arctic tundra can do for us? Do you know that it is a carbon sink? Yes, it absorbs more carbon than it releases. Exactly right. It does more. It has more benefits than it harm than it does. Our homeland will live forever. Hello once again, comrades! We are here, investigating Northern Siberia. Not much life around. Oh, over here, a nice young person. We can interview. Sir, sir, I have a question. One second. Do you know any problems? Do you know any problems facing our homeland? The thunder is melting. Oh, he's right! Now, I what I want! <laughs> Hello, my friends! It is me, brother comrade! Petrov! Let's get cheeky bricky, my friend! Woo! 